Now that you know how to solve linear equations, we have to talk about a couple unique solutions to linear equations. You may come up with an answer of no solution, or you may come up with an answer of infinitely many solutions. Um, no solution is also sometimes referred to as identity. Um, if it is no solution, that means that if you take your equation, if you start plugging in things for x, no matter what you plug in for x, the left side and the right side are never going to be equal. Your equation will never be true. Um, so for that reason, um, or kind of a way to remember that is that um, the answer that you get after you complete your steps is something funky like 2 equals 4, or negative 6 equals 6, or 0 equals 7, something that's never true. On the other hand, you'll have infinitely many solutions, which means any value can work. No matter what you plug in, your equation, equation will work. If once you go through all your solving steps, your final answer is always true. Negative 7 equals negative 7, 0 equals 0, x equals x, 4x equals 4x, anything like that. Um, so let's look at some examples so you can see what I mean. Okay, first example. So I see I have an equation to solve here. So I'm going to start by getting rid of my parentheses. So I'm going to distribute the 3 over 4. And I'm going to go ahead and say I have 3 over 4 times 8x minus 3 over 4 times 16. Notice I'm not upset that I have a fraction. I'm just taking it in stride. Equals... Since I don't have anything to distribute on the right, and the left side and the right side are somewhat se separate, um, I'm going to go ahead and skip the distribution step and go to go ahead and like combine like terms over here and say I have 6x minus 3. Okay, from here, I'm lucky enough that I see in my fractions, I can always reduce diagonally with fractions first. So I can say that 4 is going to reduce to 1 and that 8 is going to reduce to 2 and I divide them both by 4. I love fractions and I have no problem working with them, but if I can work with whole numbers instead, I'd always choose that. These will both divide by 4, giving me 1 and 4. So now I'm going to go ahead and actually do that multiplication. 3 times 2x is 6x. Notice I do not have to put the 1 on the bottom. Minus 3 times, sorry, that's probably really loud. 3 times 4 is 12 equals 6x minus 3. From here, I want to make sure I have a variable only on one side. So I'm going to pick one of my x's, either the x's on the left or the x's on the right. So let's say I pick the x's on the left. In order to get rid of this 6x, since it's a positive 6x, this negative belongs to the 12, I'm going to go ahead and subtract 6x. But if I subtract 6x from the left, I have to do it to the right. 6x minus 6x is nothing. They're gone. The negative 12 drops down. 6x minus 6x is nothing. It's gone. The minus 3 drops down. Well, does negative 12 equal negative 3? Hopefully you're all saying no, it doesn't, and it never will. So that is going to tell me, notice that, if, if after completing the solving steps, the final answer is false, then I'm going to go ahead and say that there's no solution to this. And that's it. That's all I do. Um, let's look at example 2. I'm going to do kind of the same steps, go through my solving process. I'm going to go ahead and start by seeing that I have a minus sign to distribute. So I'm going to distribute the minus in, giving me 14 minus 2m minus 5 equals negative 2m plus 9. So I have some like terms over here. I have 14 minus 5, which is going to give me 9. My minus 2m drops down. From here, I'm going to go ahead and say I do not want an m on both sides. So I'm going to add 2m here which means I also have to add 2m here. So my 9 drops down. Negative 2m plus 2m is gone. Negative 2m plus 2m is gone here as well. My 9 drops down. I ask myself, does 9 equal 9? You bet it does. It always does. So I'm going to go ahead and say that there are infinitely many solutions. Okay, which means, again, anything I plugged in could work. Pick your favorite number. Plug it in for m back up here in the original equation, and what you're going to see is that you get a true statement. Ask your best friend to pick their favorite number, plug it in up there, and you're going to, again, get a true statement. Um, I wanna, do want to point out that some of you aren't going to have to go this far. You may have noticed right here that the left side and the right side were exactly the same. So if that happens, feel free to make a judgment call from there that there's infinitely many solutions. Um, there are two more examples, very similar to example one and example two. If you feel like you've got it, go ahead and stop here. If you want to try example three and then watch me work through it, please do that. Same thing with example four, or just go ahead and watch me work through them.
Okay, so example three, I'll start by distributing because I see I have a three to distribute over here. I also see I have some like terms on the left, so I'm gonna go ahead and combine my like terms on the left. They're on the same side, so I'm just gonna combine them. I'm not gonna change any signs. 9x plus 3x after I distribute, which again are like terms, so I'm gonna go ahead and combine those. From here, I do not want an x on both sides, so I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of one of them. Let's say I subtract 12x from here. That means I have to do it here as well. I'm not adding because the negative behind it belongs to the 10. And I get negative 10 equals 12x minus 12x. Typically we won't write anything when they just go away, but I have to have some kind of placeholder. So since nothing is on the right, I'm gonna put a zero. Since negative 10 never equals zero, that's not true. I'm gonna go ahead and say no solution. And then let's look at example four. So I don't have anything to distribute, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna combine like terms. So on the left I have negative four a and positive one a, so that's gonna give me a negative three a. On the left, two a and negative five a is gonna give me a negative three a. I'm gonna go ahead and add three a here. And I get one equals zero a, or nothing, and then equals one. So notice one is always equal to one, so since that's a true statement, I'm gonna say infinitely. many solutions. And so in the um, first couple of videos we talked about what is it going to happen, how do I get one solution. I get one solution because at the end after I go through my solving process I get something like a equals 1 or x equals negative 10 or m equals 9. Okay, that's one solution. If instead I get something funky like negative 10 equals 0 that never makes sense, there's no solution. Or if I get something that always is true, like 1 equals 1 or 9 equals 9, that's going to be infinitely many solutions.